Hello everybody, I have the keys to the Hotel Artemis and you're watching Chimp Reviews. I have my timer set for six minutes. Let's do this. Hotel Artemis is a not-too-distant dystopian action suspense caper set in Los Angeles 2028. It stars Sterling K. Brown, Jodie Foster, Jeff Goldblum and Dave Bautista. If you are a criminal and you have suffered an injury which takes more than a rub of aloe vera to deal with, then you can visit a dark room, an outside-of-the-law refuge where you can get patched up with no questions asked. Just make sure that you are a member. Hotel Artemis is one such place, and on this foreboding Wednesday night, not everything is as it should be. Water is privatised. The masses are thirsty. Riots are at boiling point, and you do not want to be out on the street. It's the perfect setting for a group of misfit characters to rock up at the wrong time and at certainly the wrong place, especially seen as the city's most feared criminal Goldblum kingpin, <laughs> or shall I say Grandmaster, <laughs> uh, is on its way to Hotel Artemis to say hello. So begins a suspenseful, violent broth of betrayal and murder, causing you, the viewer, to ask the question, who will make it out of this alive? So, there are many things about this film that are likeable. The daunting, claustrophobic quality of being lodged in a place with no feasible exit. The juxtapose of being surrounded by an open space that is so dangerous you might as well consider it radioactive. The mood, the lighting, the music, the noise. All put in place to evoke the sense that everything is about to go boom. Is it any wonder then that I was gripped? I mean, I was gripped for the entire first half. I'd even go as far as to say that I was gripped for the first two thirds, and then... Ugh, tropes. Kind of tropes. Silly, silly little things, you know. The action movie equivalent to cheap comedy. You know, first you get this need to kind of layer the story with twists and turns, you know, that suddenly jump out and say, Hey, I'm the crux of the story. I just didn't tell you that going in. You know, it's like the basic premise is incapable of supporting itself. Except here's the thing. It is capable of supporting itself. It's a great premise. You know, but they feel they have to throw in these little story arcs. You know, turns out this happened all along. Turns out he did that. Well, okay, you know, it's all fun and games having a kind of mystery. But I think a movie like this is better off without that. It's a great idea. I love the simplicity of Hotel Artemis, you know. So maybe what I'm saying is a small nitpick, but overall there's a sense that, you know, the array of characters suddenly implode and go all dysfunctional just because the movie is about to finish and they had to tie it all up. There seemed to be a sudden gap in sensibility. The end did not substantiate the beginning. It was not as good in the finish as it was at the start, and so came the dissatisfaction. And that was a real shame. You know, I felt like this film was going so well. <sighs> you know, and when you're making a you know, when you're making a sci-fi movie where the main character is a medical professional and you're therefore dealing in some hefty surgical nitty grit, is it really a good matchup to have one of the characters dispatch a squadron of goons using high precision knife throws and wall bouncing martial arts? Almost like gravity defying action was what the doctor ordered. It wasn't. The movie started with a bank heist, the carnage was messy and fairly realistic, and then it changed its mind. It sort of wanted to be a bit like The Matrix at the end. Because, you know, it kind of wanted to end on a high. Uh, but to be fair, the opposite happened. You know, I didn't hate this film. It was a solid caper. Uh, the locations and the settings were marvellous. You know, I loved that bit with a helicopter. <laughs> You'll know which bit I'm talking about when you see it. Um, I hate to say this, but I think it kind of submerged itself in a swill of its own self-importance. Um, they weaved all these things together, and then all these things that they weaved collapsed because they tried to justify the movie in a way that did not need to be justified. The characters were doing fine. Um, I thought the profanities were a bit excessive, not because I'm offended by swearing, 
but because if you use the F word too many times, then it just stops being the F word. It just becomes another word that sounds silly. You've got to use that word once or twice in a movie and then it will have its full impact. That's the whole point of a profanity. It's shocking. You know, if you use it every two and a half seconds, it's not really shocking anymore. It just gets a bit silly. Um, and I kind of find that a bit irritating in a lot of films and this was one where that certainly stood out everything was going really well and i think there were some stellar performances i love the mix of characters jeff Goldblum as a villain it worked jodie foster great great absolutely stellar Dave Bautista is always a pleasure when they put a good script in front of him he's a great actor he's an entertainer he's brilliant um, I will give this a solid thumbs up and a thumbs down in perfect harmony because I think it was a great film let down by just a bit of a daft ending. And yeah, it's a shame that didn't happen at the beginning. And the time is up. And that was my review. Was I talking a complete load of nonsense? I am fairly certain that I was. And that is why you, the viewer, are free to disagree. So thank you very much for watching my review. I will see you next time. And have a good time until then. Ta-ta for now.